Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 106. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the funeral commander Harbison. Mr. Harbison, commander, sir, what's up? Man, uh, it's just another week that we're rolling along with big news, great interview coming up. Uh, it's going to be fantastic today. You're not, this is the first time we've ever had an interview from the inside of an embalming room. That's very true. So uh, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned to uh, a next-gen embalmer and somebody who's really got it going on. So, you know, the great part about today, this show is not possible unless we have our guys from CNJ and Jamie. I just went down to Florida and worked with a company that uses them exclusively. They get their money. They get it within 48 hours. For the most part, and uh, guys, if you're not doing this, you're wrong. So uh, let's roll a little C and J. What payment method do you prefer families use for your goods and services? Most funeral homes and cemeteries prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance as the preferred method of payment. However, families who use life insurance are able to purchase the funeral service of their choice and spend 31% more on your goods and services. By encouraging more families to pay with insurance, you can create a better experience for the family and become more profitable without increasing your call volume. The reason most firms prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance is that insurance companies are a hassle to deal with and payment can often take weeks or months to receive. With CJ Financial, you can receive funding within 24 hours of verification of benefit, thereby eliminating the hassle, headache, and cash flow delay in processing insurance death claims. Let us show you why hundreds of funeral homes all across America choose C&J for their assignment funding needs and why many associations, accounting firms, and industry leaders recommend C&J to their clients and members. So, Ryan, uh, what's going on out here in the news world? You're kind of the guy in the know a lot. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, the biggest story in the last week has been uh, the... Uh, American Academy McAllister Institute scandal that uh, is going on with the mortuary school where seven teachers have been charged and over 300 uh, students have had their license revoked. Uh, so not a good situation there. Now, you know what? Uh, it, it's just amazing that the funeral industry makes the news so often but not in the right way. Yeah. And uh, I just think this is a travesty. It's not anything the students did, but these folks up there, I mean, really, what were you thinking? And what we'd love to be able to do, perhaps we can get someone that's been affected by this particular scandal um, to reach out to us. Uh, obviously, some people, they participated in it too, but bottom line is it's just another black eye yeah. on something we don't need to be. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd like to chat with somebody about it. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. So, yeah. Hey, there's some other big news. You've got something going on uh, Tuesday the 27th, don't yes, you? Yes, Tuesday, March 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern. We are doing a free Facebook webinar. Um, it's going to be about a 35 to 40 minute presentation that looks at what funeral homes should be doing on Facebook, the type of content they should be putting out, and then how does that content drive leads. And we're going to show a couple case studies where we're working with funeral homes driving over 20,000 a month in pre-need lead sales from Facebook ads. So it'll be a very, very intuitive. And the thing about it is, Jeff, it's going to be free. Uh, we're not charging for this. It'll live on demand if you can't watch it live on our Facebook page. So good stuff, but just providing value back to the profession. You know, that's something, uh, this part of this show, that's something that your company, Disrupt Media, does. That's something we hear at the foresight do yep. is content yep. and providing information. You don't have to pay for it, right? It's something we want to do to give back. So kudos to you. I tell you some other big news, Ryan. I've got something here. I want to kind of promo it. You gave me this idea. This is an official funeral commander poker chip. Poker okay? chip. Woo. And it's, it's probably I, worth a thousand dollar chip, right? It is. And you know what? With this, um, you have my number to help you get out of jail. So that's pretty much what it's worth, or you can mark your ball. So we've got some shows coming up, the ICCFA. Yeah. I'm going to be down to OGR. So if you mention uh, I want one of your effing chips, I'll get you one. We'll take a picture and post it. But uh, otherwise, I'm just – these are highly regarded things like yours. You got your mug on one too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, sure do. Sure do. 
Yeah. So who's brought us the big news today, Ryan? Uh, this big news is brought to us by Sitch. Uh, disruptors in the casket world and uh, making a lot of waves. So let's roll that promo. Funeral Nation is sponsored by Sitch Casket. Sitch has changed everything for funeral homes facing declining profits from cremation with casket quality equal to the top domestic brands, but at half the cost or better. Sitch, only your accountant can tell the difference. All right, Mr. Commander, what do we have? You, you, you teased this earlier. We we're going deep inside the embalming room or prep room. Uh, who's our interview with today? You know, I'm really excited. I've been trying to uh, get her on uh, our show. She travels a lot. She's a consummate professional, speaks, and uh, I see her as one of the rising stars of the funeral profession and one of the top embalmers is uh, Monica Torres. She's coming to us from an embalming room. So let's roll that interview. Monica, welcome to the Funeral Nation show. Uh, guys, this is as good as it gets. We've never done an interview uh, from inside an embalming room. So Monica, please introduce yourself and share with us your professional background. Hello, everybody. It's so great to be here today. Thank you for inviting me on the show, you guys. It's a total honor. Um, my name is Monica Torres. I'm a Arizona embalmer and funeral director. And my background is in reconstruction and deserology. Very cool. We well, are highly regarded as an embalmer spreading a new message uh, about your craft. We share with us um, some of the new techniques and ideas embalmed prep that uh, you highlight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm always trying to um, come up with better or I would say maybe like more innovative techniques in embalming. Um, right now I'm working on an exciting new technique for unembalmed remains. I know it's kind of a struggle for us embalmers in the prep room. Um, we're constantly doing that dance around time to try and prepare an unembalmed body. So um, I'm working on a no leak technique for the, uh, the cranium on posted bodies. So that's kind of exciting. And I'll be releasing that later this year with some other um, techniques that I'm working on as well. And uh, most notably, I get, um, I get a lot of calls, most notably for the no wax torus technique which is a hair restoration technique that I devised a few years ago. That's outstanding. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I love our profession because we are excited about new embalming techniques, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's wonderful because you're one of the, in fact, your company is the next gen, but this is the next generation and people think that, gosh, you know, what's going to happen? What are we doing? Monica, you're doing some great stuff. So what uh, what challenges today do embalmers face that maybe they didn't in the past? Um, well, there's a, there's a ton. I would say most notably with the rise in cremation, um, as embalmers, we're facing a lot of these unembalmed bodies that we're trying to figure out new ways how to treat without the actual embalming process taking place and how to make these bodies viewable for their loved ones, um, even if it is just an ID view. So that's a major challenge, I think, for most embalmers. I can at least speak for myself on that. Um, when it comes down to the art of embalming and the science, nowadays we're facing these, like the donor cases are becoming more and more challenging, for sure. Those happen to be my favorite cases. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy doing those cases and, and making people viewable. Um, when, when donor network or the other donor uh, companies have done their job. But um, I also see a lot of um, obesity, as you know, is on the rise and those are challenging cases. Many times we have bodies that um, are obese and have edema. Those are toughies. And I think more and more we're, we're seeing those kind of bodies that um, that we're having to take care of in the prep room and find new ways to treat them. Um, the opioid crisis, mm -hmm. that's a big deal right now for a lot of embalmers. I know that's been a struggle for me. I've, I've really had to reach out to um, my mentors and other embalmers and say, you know, how are you guys treating these bodies? How are, you know, what, what do I need to expect? What do I need to be ready for? 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, what do you see are from your perspective? Um, what does the future of embalming look like? Well, <clears throat> the future, if I have anything to do with it, there's going to continue to be uh, more new techniques that are relevant to the kind of cases that we're dealing with today. But I think there's going to be a shift in embalmers per se as becoming um, professionals that are also working primarily with unembalmed bodies. Mm. You know, with cremation on the rise the way it is, we can't brush that aside anymore. We have to bring that focus back to the body. And as embalmers, that's us. That's our job. It may not be actually embalming that body, but, um, you know, finding new techniques, getting the authorizations that we need from families to be able to treat the body so that that person can be viewable. Those that's going to be the shift that I see. You know, it's interesting you say that. And, and I applaud you in that particular area. Uh, cremation isn't a problem in the funeral industry. Right. The problem is the funeral directors in the funeral industry. Yeah. We're doing a terribly poor job of letting families know the opportunities. The body's still the body, but you know we don't want to talk about that when it comes to cremation. So you're certainly an advocate. Well, Monica, uh, this is going to be the fun part of the show. I know that you're a fan, and uh, you know what's coming up. We're going to give you the lightning round. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Let's hear it. Okay, so what's your best vacation spot? Best vacation spot for me is anything with a beach. Any Any kind of like um, dog beach where I can take my beloved pet fancy and hang on the beach, drink some pina coladas or some pacificos, whatever cocktail is popular in that region. That's, yeah. a, spot. <laughs> That's a perfect thing to do. The pirate life for me, rum and cigars. So uh, yeah. <laughs> we have everything here in Arizona, but an ocean. If we had that, nobody would ever leave. That's right. <laughs> All right. So what's your dream job? Well, I'd have to say um, my, my dream job, it's always been my, my lifelong dream to be able to serve um, our fallen heroes at Fort Mortuary in Dover. So that's my dream job. I hope that um, someday before I'm, you know, working part time, you know, as an old funeral director, <laughs> working services, I hope that I will have that opportunity to be able to, um, to serve our, our veterans and the, the, service members that have given us so much. Awesome. All right. So your favorite meal? Um, is this like my like last meal that you get? Yeah, your electric chair <laughs> food. This is it today. Let it go. Yeah. So I would say, um, you know, I'm of uh, Mexican-American descent. And so naturally, I have a amazing um, mother who cooks amazing Mexican food. So I would have to say it have to be from mama's kitchen. Um, and my mom makes the most amazing menudo. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's, uh, it's been coined as the um, hangover soup. So like traditionally we eat that on like New Year's and Christmas. Um, it has a little funny, um, has some funny stuff in it. I'll just like, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> but that would probably be my favorite. All right. Uh, in fact, you know, interesting last night, I, I have been turned on and had some again last night. Elote. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Right yeah. here. I'm a Southern boy, you but I'll tear up some elote. Oh, my gosh. All right. Here's a big question. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh, that's a good one. And I have a good answer for you. I would have to say my celebrity crush is the, the very young West Point graduate, Robert E. Lee. <laughs> yes you mean like uh robert e lee from richmond robert e lee west point robert e lee yes from the civil war kind i'm kind of a history buff kind of a civil war nerd so that would be it i, I don't know whether to stand and salute with pride <laughs> or, or, or but wow <laughs> You know, Ryan, uh, let's make sure that we have a picture of this because uh, right. we, uh, we want to find a picture. Monica and Robert back in the day. You know, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's a great one. Uh, so the last one we'll finish up our interview with 
if you could wave a magic wand uh, and fix one thing in the funeral business, what would it be, Monica? If I could wave my magic wand, poof, I would I would request and um, I would want that embalmers and funeral directors would have equal pay. That's what I that's what I would request. I think that um, the people in our industry work very very hard. Um, many times it's back backbreaking work, and um, I'd like to see the professionals in our field get paid a little better so that they could, um, you know, sustain a comfortable a comfortable living. That's uh, that's a great one, Monica. We are blessed and grateful you came on our show, but more so what you're doing in our profession and uh, uh, as a next gen, as we call it. In uh, I have to tell you, you're a rising star, and uh, I hope that we can uh, converse a little bit more and have you back on the show. And anytime we can help you with your endeavors, please let us know. And FNers, um, you need to pay attention to this young lady because she's got it going on in that embalming room. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for reaching out to me and having me. And I do want to thank All Options Funeral Home for opening up their prep room to me so that we yep. could have this interview. And, yeah, please stay tuned. Um, you guys can follow me on Facebook. If you guys have any questions, I'm always a soundboard. And um, I love to meet and talk to other embalmers. And, you know, we are the future of our business. And we have to stick together and make the changes that we want to see. Absolutely. That's it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you're highly respected and regarded. And uh, thank you for being on our show and have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Monica. Bye. Bye. Uh, great interview. You know, and embalming is uh, one of the topics that doesn't get a lot of play in our profession. It's one of the most important things that, that funeral directors and embalmers do to serve a family is embalming that loved one. So great to see some innovation in a uh, a a process that doesn't see a lot of innovation. So really cool. Um, and this, yeah, it was. It, you know, it's interesting too, just to comment uh, what she brought up about bodies um, uh, for uh, especially presented without embalming yeah. for cremation. Yeah. It's really smart. It's something we need to pay attention to. But I also have to tell you, uh, it's a bit of a shocker uh, that uh, Robert E. Lee, Robert, Robert E. Lee, Lee and Ooh. Monica Torres, who knew? Wow. Right, right mean, here, exposed nationwide, internationally. <laughs> um, there's something new uh, added to our profession. Unreal. You know, really, <laughs> I, I, I'm shocked about it. So that's a cool thing. When I don't say anything, something's going on. Uh, we brought, uh, we've got this interview brought to us by our friends at Live Oak Bank, uh, Tim and Megan and all their gang over there. So uh, let's run their promo. Live Oak Bank provides finance expertise that inspires funeral home and cemetery owners to grow their business and preserve their legacy. Their funeral home and cemetery lending team understands the profession from top to bottom. They know what business owners like you need to succeed, so they specialize in providing custom financial solutions accompanied by personal service. They're focused on helping you achieve your goals no matter the challenges. Good stuff. And you and I are actually going to be together at a Live Oak Bank um, roundtable uh, later on this summer. So we'll make sure that we come to you live from, from that event. But uh, thanks, Live Oak Bank, for being part of the show. All right, yeah. Jeff, here we go. Okay, so this WTF segment, um, this is one of the better ones that we've had. It's, it's interesting because I could actually see somebody trying that. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. What? Yeah, this is what I see as the, when you are a discount cremation company, this is it, okay? I, so I, I think if, if, frankly, if you're some competitive folks out here watching this show and you want to show the difference between a retort and what you do for your profession and your competitor, you know, why do we cost more? Here's one reason. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Here you go. And this is the the home of this fifty nine ninety nine direct cremation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you can't get much cheaper than that. And if you got plenty of room, you can stick a hot dog on there at the same time. <laughs> oh, we won't touch that one. All right. <laughs> well, well, you know what? The next week's show, uh, we've got another superlative coming on. It's fun. You know, uh, we're really blessed, Ryan, that we have uh, been. Uh, provided a platform and a voice in this industry. Yeah. And, 
anyway, we, we've got a great show next week. We've got some out of town shows we'll be doing. And, uh, in fact, I'm going to have to do one from offshore. That'll be a surprise. I'm going to be, uh, yeah. out of the country and, uh, Ooh. yeah, it might be anyway, I'll bring that up a little later. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here.